it's Phil Ratcliffe, and thanks for tuning in again today. Uh, today we're going to talk about something that is near and dear to our hearts, um, and that is ESG, um, or Environmental, uh, Socially Responsible, and Good Corporate Governance, um, and Microloans. Uh, really trying to use the resources that we have uh, to make the world a better place. Um, and I think uh, now, as, of, as any time uh, throughout history, um, it's really important for us uh, to do this. Uh, I think many of you would probably agree with us uh, that greed and self-service um, and individualism um, has just gone so far uh, that it makes a lot of us cynical. Um, and that really hits into why is this important? You know, why is it important uh, for us to care? Isn't somebody else going to do this? Or can't we legislate it? Um, or could we even make a difference? Um, <laughs> kind of the, the old cynical view of uh, why even vote? It's not going to make a difference. You know, and, and if everybody thinks that way, then absolutely it, it won't. But when we really get down to it, we work hard. And I think those people that watch this or would interact with us, uh, a financial company, uh, we save our money, and, 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 it, and it is, you know, kind of self-serving. We want to retire. We want to take care of our families and what so. But that doesn't mean uh, that we can't be good, uh, good citizens in our communities and our countries and just as humans in the world to do right by each other, um, even though we definitely want to take care of the ones that we love um, as well. And even kind of beyond that on the financial side of things, even though I don't think a lot of people think about this, except for maybe regulators and uh, politicians and, and what so, is our entire financial system um, is built on trust. If you don't trust to do business with someone, if you don't trust that if you invest in someone that they're not going to rob you um, or that you will have more in the future uh, than just putting it in a safe in your back room. I just, I just had a gentleman come in this week that was upset that uh, he lost money over the last 18 months, which it's very hard for me to fathom how that could happen. Uh, but, you know, why shouldn't he just put his money in the ground and not trust anybody? And if we do that, we won't grow. We won't progress. Um, we can't continue to get better. Um, and so this is a fundamental problem. And I think a lot of people are looking at a lot of the executives of almost every publicly traded company in the United States and saying they're robbing the system. No one deserves to be paid that much. There are plenty of people... Uh, that are MBAs from business schools, great ones around the world that didn't have the connections uh, to get in those positions that would do the work for a fraction of the cost and in many cases probably do a better job. So it's absolutely ludicrous. Um, and it erodes the trust that we have in each other in that system. And so beyond just you know what we are started out talking about, doing the right thing, and people think just investing per you know your values and you give up greater. No, this is important for our entire financial system and all of us that have retirement accounts and investment accounts and 401ks, we own these companies. And we can, if we wanted to, make them do what we want. And the government works for us. We can make them do what we want as well, too. So anyways, let's get into it. Let's dig down into our kind of bread and butter of it, uh, is how we help our clients uh, with the ESG. Again, environmental, social, um, and good governance, corporate governance. And to kind of break it down, let's, let's look at each one of those. So, you know, when we talk about environmental, what are we talking about? Well, it could be from emissions or recycling, energy efficiency, uh, reporting, um, and even when people get in trouble uh, doing bad things. And why does it matter? You know, it matters because to have a good future in which the costs um, of what we're doing that we may not be paying right now uh, could be significant. And companies that are looking at those liabilities, trying to minimize them, first of all, uh, could very much be more profitable um, in the future for having done that, even though there might be some costs associated a little bit up front. Even when you look at putting some awesome energy efficient geothermal heating system in your house, yeah, it may cost a lot of money, but within 10 years you're going to get your money back, and if you live there for 20, that's awesome. You know. So again, these things aren't just about uh, doing something that just costs extra money for no reason except for something touchy-feely, a, a lot of times this is going to create the sustainable world where we can have the emerging economies go up and have an awesome middle class like we had that made American great back in the 50s or 60s, and that's going to be good for all of us. And it needs to be sustainable, and we need to have companies and governments that are going to be leaders um, in doing that, 
And by being investors in that, we can push them to do that. And if we as a society are going to hold bad actors accountable, then the good actors are going to be more profitable. Um, so that's important. The second thing, when we look at a lot of the social things, when we look at workplace diversity and employee relations and health and safety and even human rights, I mean, there's still slavery in the world. Um, and there's companies that either participate or turn a blind eye or allow criminal elements to do things, um, are not taking care of their employees, pay their executive staff ludicrously, um, even in nonprofits. Nonprofits are horrible at this when you look at a lot of the hospitals um, and what so and how much they pay their uh, patient care associates and nurses compared to the upper, uh, well, what they would consider upper uh, staff. Um, and these people are really the people that I think statistically make the biggest difference in people's lives, and it's not right. Um, and then second, uh, product-wise, you know, the integrity of the service or the product that these companies put out um, and how they market and advertise that. If they're lying about that, yeah, maybe they'll have a better quarter or a year or something like Wells Fargo did uh, with their bad sales practices and then act and, and now nobody even wants to take responsibility uh, that this was an internal systematic problem. And this is happening through lots of companies. And if you're with me, just don't do business with them. And that is why these companies will be more profitable that do the right things. Um, and then product health and safety um, and consumer complaints. All of these things are uh, very important. I mean, you even look at the Better Business Bureau um, and while I love the concept, and I think a lot of the people that work for them are great, it's a joke. Nothing happens if you ever complain to the Better Business Bureau. Um, it's, these companies donate a lot. This is where the Better Business Bureau makes its money. Donate a lot of money to them, and it gets swept under the rug. So there's no accountability. And now even look now, the government's taken down uh, the Consumer Protection uh, Bureau, which is mainly good for just about every American, unless you're way, way, way on the top. Um, so again... Um, when we own these companies, we can hold them accountable. And if we do over time, they're going to be more profitable. Um, and even when you look at the one, three, five in year rate of return, you know, for our ESG investments has actually been better. Um, and the cost has actually gone down because almost a fifth of all investments uh, now um, are ESG, which is great. You know, it's not niche. The costs have come down. It doesn't cost much to do this. Um, and the rate of returns will probably be higher. So now let's look at governance. So we look at government governance. Look at, you know, one thing that I bet just about every person can agree on is we love our communities, right? Why do you live there? Don't you want the place where you live and where you're going to raise kids and et cetera going to be better in the future than now and that you're a part of that? So community relations, uh, uh, what companies are doing philanthropically um, and what they do in terms of uh, leading in the community in terms of what they give or programs or letting employees take time to give back uh, to the places that have made them successful. Uh, get them more into a little bit of our side of things, share shareholders' rights. We've already talked about a little bit executive compensation, corruption, bribery. Um, all of these things I think we think, um, you know, first of all, right and wrong. Um, almost everybody can agree on that. But to a certain extent, unless somebody breaks the, the law, we're not holding people accountable. We don't have to put people in jail, but we can absolutely hold people accountable uh, to say that you don't work here anymore um, or you're not going to be in this industry um, or work for this publicly traded company that we as, you know, with our retirement accounts own them. Um, so really, let's, let's do a little bit of screen share here. Um, we're really, I've done this for like 10 years since Rebel Financial has started. Um, we've been about um, helping people invest per their values. You know, if you go to the About Us section, um, go down to Why Choose Us, you could scroll down to where we talk about our investment philosophy, um, our socially responsible investing program. We also have other values-based uh, models, Christian values, uh, Sharia law, halal. Um, so we try to make it to where it's very good. And you can click on each one of those, and they have more explanations. Uh, it's a little wordy rather than pictures, but... You know, that's, that's just where we are here. And it talks about some of our biggest partners here. Um, one of the nonprofits you can check out, and I think Tony's going to post it down below so you guys can see it. Uh, I like this forum for sustainable and resp uh, responsible investment. It really goes through what ESG is uh, from someone that uh, is, is uh, a nonprofit, um, not, you know, like us or 
a couple of the fun companies I'm going to name a little bit later, but really out there to try to influence uh, what people know, helping investment advisors and managers uh, do a better job influencing public policy, et cetera. Um, it's pretty good. And then uh, one of our biggest partners for, it used to be called Socially Responsible Investing, or SRI, but now it's kind of expanded uh, to be ESG, uh, is Calvert, Calvert Investments. And so if you want to learn more or what, so they've got a great uh, website and, and more money than we do to put uh, information out there and make pretty things. But I really like the where they just go through their pillars of how they do things um, and really just talks about, you know, we don't want to sacrifice uh, people being able to uh, protect and grow their livelihoods and their retirement. Um, and so performance and a lot of these things that we're talking about here, we don't think that you're going to have to give up much. And that's, it goes through the process of we want to make sure that we still focus on performance, but we need to research, engage with companies. And then even now that we're, it's getting bigger and more people are leveraging the power that we have, to make an impact, to start businesses or control the ones that exist and make them do the right things um, because we own them. Um, and so I think it's it's really cool. You can look through here. Um, one of the things also in the literature section of it as well, uh, there's a, you know, overview. This is like really breaks it down in terms of like, you know, how do we look at, you know, researching things? What information is available? How do we rank company? What decisions do they make? And then going through the process of seeing how we do things. Because when you invest kind of passively, um, like what we're talking about with the ESG, using ESG funds or an investment manager to help you pick the funds and rebalance and what so, um, in the past, it, it, and still the majority of, of funds are like this, is it's mainly about uh, positive and negative screening, looking for companies that are doing the right things um, and including them, and then finding bad actors, even if they used to be good when they do something bad, and screening them out. Um, and so, you know, as things get bigger and we can pool together, we can actually make a difference by voting proxies, uh, getting rid of hopefully a lot of the boards um, around the countries, um, having executive turnover, finding talented people that want to do the right thing for shareholders um, and also all the other stakeholders, our communities, um, our employees, um, our country and humanity and our world in general. Um, so <clears throat> check that out. It's pretty cool. So the next thing that I'm going to hit into um, are microloans. And there are lots of different ways to participate in microloans. Uh, one of our favorites is Kiva. Um, I really personally um, want to do something like this uh, for impact, not just to make small loans uh, to small business owners in the United States that have tons of options. Uh, through SBA, et cetera, uh, and, and private banks. But in emerging economies where people don't necessarily have the opportunity to start a business and their only option may be to work in a sweatshop or a textile mill or even worse, uh, to starve and not even have anything or a job. Whereas if they could raise $1,000 um, and each of us chipped in $25 to someone they could buy a cow or a sewing machine or something and start a business. And the repayment on these loans um, is upwards some better than people with 800 credit scores here. So I think the, the repayment rate is over 97%. And so the average rate of return to you, um, you know, might be somewhere between 6 to 8%, which is awesome. I mean, what do you get from the banker credit union right now? Um, obviously, this is not FDIC, so it's not totally the same. But, you know, for a portion of what you're doing savings-wise to help somebody, you know, it's great. Um, we personally have a team. So right now, mainly our employees, but some of our clients are, are joining in, and we welcome anybody uh, that wanted to join our team. But you can basically um, go down, you can join, and then you can see people that we've helped. If you wanted to kind of jump on board, and you could help them too to kind of leverage you know, maybe my due diligence of what so of actually have, having read everything um, or what so you could do that. Um, and you can also look at some of the graphs and the impact um, and what so that we make as a, as a team together. So when we look at, you know, say, well, the first one that comes up is gender, but we could look at, you know, what countries um, are we helping? 
You know, look at all those from Uganda to Samoa to Albania to Ghana to Jordan. You know, it's pretty cool. And then you can look at, <clears throat> you know, what industries or sectors um, have we mainly invested in? You know, agriculture, clothing, manufacturing, arts, food. Um, so I really like this. I mean, you know, kind of the way that it works is, is once you're in here, um, you can look through people's uh, profiles. You can even screen them um, however you like. You know, say, I really would like to invest in eco-friendly or in someone that is starting a business. You could screen by countries and you can look at, you know, <clears throat> and you can lend as little as 25. I mean, that's generally what I do is just $25 per person and just spread it out. Um, and you can even look for repeat borrowers that have just done a good job in the past and repaid, so even reducing the risk. Sometimes you'll find in here where other people and organizations will double what you put in um, if you put in <clears throat> for that person or cause or what so. Um, so a wonderful thing of how we can use our money to continue to grow it to help other people that don't want to hand out. They just want an opportunity to do something better. So again, you know, why, why are these things important? I mean, don't you want to live in a better world um, in which we can trust each other, in which we help each other come up? It's not a dog-eat-dog -dog world. There is, especially as technology um, increases in education around the world, there will be a change, hopefully in the next decade, from scarcity to abundance, and we don't have to fight and kill each other um, anymore to fight over scarce resources. We can live together, we can do a good job, and we should do it responsibly because a system that is fair and equitable inspires trust and is going to multiply the growth of that economy because we can trust each other to loan to each other, to put in startup money, to uh, be more confident that people aren't going to rip us or our grandparents off, um, etc. So again, um, I hope this helps you uh, at a minimum. If you are investing, um, look into ESG uh, investing uh, through your investment advisor um, or investment firm. Um, there is a way to do it responsibly to where there's not much more risk, if any at all, um, for a very reasonable cost. Our ESG portfolios right now are only 0.05% more expensive. That is awesome. A decade ago, it was like a percent more. Um, so you could see how, again, it's not a niche anymore. It is mainstream. Um, and I really believe that over time uh, that you probably will attain um, a higher rate of return uh, from pursuing strategies that take these things into, considera into consideration. So we appreciate your time again. If you're in the mid upper Midwest and, and Northeast, I uh, hope you don't get snowed in too bad. Or if you like it, go build some snowman or a fort uh, or what so. But again, join us next week. Uh, we are going to have Julie Maurer in from B2 Solutions talk about some things that small businesses can do efficiently to leverage technology, save money, increase productivity. Uh, it's going to be good. And then uh, the week after that, we're going to have uh, Craig Van Elsten from Custom Controls Group. Uh, he's started an awesome, innovative company, HVAC, doing heating and cooling, customizing systems uh, to help people be more comfortable, but also save money and be more energy efficient over time. I think that's going to be a great episode as wise. So you guys be safe, do the right thing, and we will see you next week.